awesome, awesome, awesome. That was really good, man. Now we've got to talk about Jurgen Klopp. This is the part I've been waiting for as a Liverpool fan. So, uh, essentially, to see how Klopp goes about his business and how his uh, Liverpool team plays. So I know you have some visuals to show here as well. How the Liverpool team plays, and, I, and, I, and obviously I have some questions on that as well, as opposed to how a Klopp City team plays, and essentially how Klopp has been able to get the better of that same Man City team we speak about with all those qualities. Klopp has got a lot of success out of it, and how he goes about doing that. So, yeah, let's jump straight into that one, Ashok. Yeah. So. While I was talking, while I did the sort of intro into Guardiola, I also spoke a little bit about Klopp and the, the sort of heavy metal gegen pressing style of football he has. Yep. Which, as I said, so he's he's said this that gegen pressing is the best playmaker out there. Playmaker. You don't need, yep. you don't need a hundred million number ten to create chances. Yeah. Gegen pressing will do that for you because if you lose the ball and you try and win it back immediately, five seconds, seven seconds within you losing the ball in advanced areas of the pitch, because again. Higher up the pitch is where you're more likely to lose the ball because that's where you're trying to make more yep. risky passes. You're trying to create chances. And if you win the ball back in those areas, obviously, it's, it's a lot easier for you to create chances. And that's sort of the, the, the base for his entire approach. The moment he came in at Liverpool, he, he's from then up until now, he's tried to build that. He's obviously tempered it at times, as, has, as I said, Guardiola has even Klopp has been adaptable. Um, it's not... Especially over the last, let's say, 18 months or so, because of COVID, because of the the physical demands on, on players, it's not as intense a press as we used to see earlier. But uh, it's it's targeted. It's there are Liverpool pick their moments on when to press, and when they do it, more often than not, they win the ball back. So I, I have an example here, or a couple of examples here from um, the game against Real Madrid in the Champions League last season. Uh, I think it's the it's the the game at Anfield. Yep. Just from the first few minutes of the game, just uh, the the couple of pressing instances that we saw from Liverpool. So yeah, this is actual obviously game footage. Now, first four or five minutes of the game. Now Liverpool do something known as a man-oriented press, where each of Liverpool's players pick up an opposition player and sort of press him or mark him based on where the ball is. The the alternative to this is a ball-oriented press where you basically target your players to where the ball is. It doesn't matter which player has the ball in the sense. Obviously, you target it in, in, uh, in an effective manner and in an intelligent manner. And one great example of this is the way, you know, RB Leipzig play, for example, Julian Nagelsmann. Now he's gone to Bayern Munich, but when he was at uh, RB Leipzig, Jesse Marsh, who is now taken over from him at RB Leipzig, who was RB Salzburg manager. Mm -hmm. These guys use a, a, a ball-oriented approach where, say, if the ball is out on the left, you'd have four or five players sort of converging, not on the ball as such, but say two players on the ball and three other players blocking off passing options. Um, Liverpool use a man-oriented approach now, most often, most usually. So look at this example here. Um, Koto has the ball. He's been forced into a long, or he's been forced into a sort of clearance. The ball comes back to him, and he's sort of forced to kick it like this because look at the options that he has. Uh, Eder Militao, Mane is tracking him. If he makes the pass here, Mane is on to him. Um, Federico Valverde, the number 15, if he makes the pass here, Milner, look at Milner's body positioning and just look at how he's waiting to see where the ball is going. He's yeah. literally he's, he's crouched and he's ready to pounce. If the ball comes here, he's ready to pounce on, on Valverde. Uh, Firmino is, can, can drop off and pick up uh, Tony Cruz, but he, he's also sort of, his body is, he's using his body to shadow Casemiro, you know. So the way his body is positioned, Kotoa can't pass to Casemiro because literally Firmino's on the way. Um, same thing with Vinaldum. He's picking up Cruz, but he can move out to, I think it's Nacho there, if, if the ball goes out there. So, what does Kotoa do? The only free player over here is the left back, Fulan Mendy. He tries to pass to him. Yeah. Look what happens then. The moment the ball goes here, whoever was at right back, I think it was Alexander Arnold. Alexander yep. Arnold has raced up to challenge him. Vinaldum also dropped off to challenge him. And another thing, now look at what Liverpool's press has done. Initially, just because of the way Liverpool are pressing, Cruz has had to drop in deep. Now, when the ball's gone here, it's empty ideally, in the middle of the pump. Exactly. No ideally, you wanted Cruz to be here. 
So there's no passing option for, for Mendy, yeah, yeah. essentially. Exactly. And he gives the ball. That's that's literally what happened here. He, he tried to make a pass here. He did miss kick it as well. So he miss kicked it and there was nobody else there to receive it. And I think Wayne Alden picked up the ball and Liverpool had an attack. So the two, you see, two this is what I'm doing. Let me, let me, let me uh, stop you here for a second. Yeah, so two questions that pop to mind, two things that pop up to mind with this is brilliant, right? Uh, one is, uh, it's almost, it comes across almost like it's a planned approach by Liverpool. They knew, they, they, they created the situation where they knew Quarta's only option was to go to Mendy and, and Trent and, and, and Wijnaldum were already on their bike. So they created a situation, it was planned uh, planned situation or scenario to perfection to force, <laughs> to force Quartua oh, so to make that pass out of Mendy and then Trent and Wijnaldum were bang on their bike. The other thing exactly, that comes yeah, that's sticks, the thing. Sorry, go on. And the other thing that sticks to mind here is to play this way, you've got to have ultra fit players because you're sprinting. Your initial burst of sprint to get to that player has got to be really, really quick. So you've got to have strong hamstrings. Obviously, you've got to be extremely fit to be able to make that burst of sp uh, speed sprints to get really quickly to someone to close them down. Is that a fair point? 100%. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So to the first point that you said, now Kotoa actually is not the best goalkeeper with his feet. He's good, he, but he's not. He, he can get a little rushed at times. He's prone to making yeah. or he's prone to misplacing passes. And Furlan Mendy is also not that great on the ball. So Liverpool have sort of targeted it here to as I said, they've left Mendy open as the only passing option here, right? Yep. There's nobody close by. So, Kotoa sees him open, he tries to pass to him. But the moment Kotoa makes that pass, Alexander Arnold is on his bike and he's pressing him. Because mm. players who are poor on the ball, they will obviously under pressure make, um, you know, mistakes. And that's what he makes. Yep. He makes a mistake here and, and gives the ball up and there's nobody here. Because these guys have been drawn deep. So, it is planned. And then coming to the second point that he said about fitness, um, if you remember when Klopp came in, um, one of the players who became an app, and he was already a pretty important player for Liverpool, but he became, I think, when he was fit, he used to play every game almost the first couple of seasons was Adam Lallana. Lallana yeah. was, he, he had machine. an end. Yeah, he was an absolute pressing machine. He'd come from Southampton under Mauricio <laughs> Pochettino. Pochettino is also someone who uh, favours a really high press. So he was used to those demands and he straight away slotted into Klopp's team and then uh, because he had, he was already used to the stamp uh, to the sort of physical demands in terms of stamina, in terms of his his fitness levels, and the rest of the team caught up. So, and and overall, yes, the Liverpool side over the last three seasons or so have been yeah in terms of fitness, they've been up there. You know, you need to have that to be able to press in this manner. And I'll just move on to another really good example of of the press that uh, I was talking about from the same match about a couple of minutes later. This time, it's from a goal kick. It's not. Open play, but uh, uh, you can see Kotoa plays the ball short to to Eda Militao. Again, mm -hmm. look at the positioning of the players. You've got Salah on Nacho. You've got Firmino yeah. on Casemiro. <clears throat> the moment the ball is played out, Mane is pressing Militao and Milner. Again, look at him. He's waiting. Crouching, he's crouching, ready. Waiting, yep. He's crouching and he's waiting. He's ready. The moment the pass is made, he'll pass. And look at uh, Firmino as well. He's pointing to Al and when uh, to the other Liverpool player to push forward, which I'll show in the next image. So, this is how it sets up. Now, and Militao gets the ball again. Just looking at this image, and given that he's a centre-back, he's decent on the ball, but not great. This is honest. This is the only passing option he has, which is uh, Valverde over here, number 15. Yeah, yeah. He can't really make a pass anywhere else. Yeah. So, Liverpool have sort of baited him into making this pass. The moment yeah. they do that, look at Milner. Milner's on him. This is yeah. five seconds later. Look at that he, sprint. Yeah, he, look at that sprint. He, he from receives everyone, the yeah. ball here. He receives the ball here, but because Milner closes him down, he can't open his body up. So ideally, you want to open your body up when you're receiving this. So you want to return while you're receiving it on your right foot so that you can push it and then run onto the right flank, right? Yep. But because Milner comes across and presses him, he forces him in field, he forces him behind. Closes off, he, he forces Valverde to close his body position and turn and go in field. So, because he's done that now, he can't pass forward and Pillar's anywhere there. You know, he's blocking off the pass. No choice but to pass it backwards. Now, now no, he can't pass it backwards either. Can he pass yep, it backwards? Yep. Mane, yeah. Mane is blocking the pass to uh, Militao. Yep. Yep. Uh, Firmino is gesturing to Fabinho to press, uh, I mean, not to press as such, but to push forward. If you look here, he's, he's gesturing to a player outside of shot. That player was Fabinho. Because Modric was dropping 
to offer a passing option uh, for Valverde, but Fabinho's pushed up and closed that down. Fabinho is waiting. He's ready. If the pass is made in field, he can intercept. Salah's over here as well. The only thing he can do is try and play an ambitious pass over here. Like the only, I wouldn't even say it's not risky. It is, of course, risky. But the only op- open players there are uh, Tony Cruz and absolutely on the other side of the line, Colin, Colin Mendy. But yep. Like even if you just on the edge over, here, you can see a little bit of a red color over here. There is a Liverpool, Liverpool player over here. Ready so to ready to pounce, passed, ready to pound on uh, Cruz. Exactly. So, what Valverde, I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I, 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 th- I uh, Liverpool did win the ball back over here. Either I think he tried to pass infield and it was uh, intercepted. So, you can see the sort of pressing traps that, that Liverpool is, lay is, over here. Yeah, yeah, this is extremely awesome, man. Uh, just, just a very quick point, right? Just to, uh, again, like I said, uh, very quickly uh, analyze uh, how a typical Liverpool uh, team sets up and moves the ball forward, let's say against City or against any other team for that matter. Because, you know, there's always the question. There are two things that pop up in my One is that the front three, right? Everyone talks about Firmino and how they work. And Firmino drops deep and allows those other two to cut in, which is a very different approach to how City play may be. And also, one other point I want to quickly highlight was the the the, the uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Being a playmaker right back, right? He's such a different right back. He does everything. for. He, he's, he's a Xabi Alonso for Liverpool playing from the right. So how does that work? Those two things, if you could help us address, essentially. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he's actually, I'd say, him and Kevin De Bruyne are two of the best passers in the Premier League at the moment, just in terms of the the way in which they can they can the everything vision, um, quality of the pass, weight of the pass, you know, those sort of curved crosses into the box that are so difficult to defend against. Cross field balls, uh, balls into the strikers, yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not just the strikers, Alexander Arnold and Robertson and Andy Robertson sort of play cross field passes to the, each other all, all the, time. the time. Yeah, yeah. So now with Liverpool, the thing is now with City, City also obviously do exploit the, the wide areas, but their focus is to try and get as much done in or try and get. Their, their focus of using the wide areas is to open up the central spaces and then try and attack. The, the half spaces, the half spaces. Yep. Yeah. Liverpool are more, I, I think Liverpool, uh, the way I'd like to put it is Liverpool are more direct in terms of their use of the wide spaces. They're very happy to use the wide spaces and create attacks from there. So this is, um, I'm going to sort of show you what Liverpool are doing in possession this season. And yep. the use of Harvey Elliott, Harvey Elliott very has come into the yep. game and he started is extremely interesting because it opens up um, some really interesting rotations that Liverpool are doing on the right. So, uh, again, typical sort of setup. You've got Matip, Van Dijk, Fabinho, Alisson over here. Um, they play the high line, obviously. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, what happens in possession is Alexander-Arnold comes inside. And what was happening in earlier seasons, till last season... He would go on that, the outside. Yep. No. Not that he would go on the outside. No. Wait. I'll change this to... For now, say this is Genie Wijnaldum. Yeah, he'd be on the left side of the midfield trio. Jordan Henderson would be on the right. So exactly, yeah. what would happen is Henderson would go and play almost as sort of right back slash right sided centre back to give Alexander Arnold the freedom to move forward. Mm. Now Alexander Arnold could overlap. Salah could come inside, or Alexander Arnold would be the one coming inside. Salah would stay wide. Again, same principle. Yep. If he stays out, he has to go out. This creates space. I can make the run here. He can make the run here. Whatever. Yep. If he stays narrow, he has the space. Or if he comes inside and stays narrow, Alexander Arnold has all the world, you know, all the time in the yep. world to do this. To cross. So, yeah. Now, Firmino also dropping deep does the same thing. Pulls opposition defenders out so, so that this sort of run can be made. So that Mane can then make this sort of run. Yeah. The thing is, um, with the difference, one of the differences between Liverpool and City is that City's midfield, with that midfield three, the two number tens being used and all of that, it's they're really trying to create chances from there. Those two players are going to be massively involved in chance creation. Yep. The Liverpool approach is one where the fullbacks are the guys who are massive, who are the playmakers. The midfield yep. is essentially just trying to sort of set the platform for that and. Um, they're plugging you know, gaps essentially, right? They're plugging gaps, plugging holes, and they're very functional. Off yeah, the ball exactly. runs, it's a very, more or less. It's a, it's yeah. a, not even no. I wouldn't even say off the ball runs. I'd say basically it's a, as Hari said, it's a it's a functional midfield. It's it's 
Yeah. Their job is to just recycle possession out to the wide flank, uh, to the wide areas, to the fullbacks, and then have these guys getting into the box and and getting on the end of chances and all of that. Because ideally, what Liverpool try to do is create a front five of this sort, so that then you have then a back three like this. You've got Fabinho sort of central and Wijnaldum sort of moving across wherever needed, at least until last season. So you've got a front five over here. With yeah. four defenders and five attackers, there will always be space somewhere. Yeah, Even yeah. if they go man to man, there will always be space somewhere. So that's what Liverpool tried to do. Now, as you said, uh, midfield is very functional. Chance creation comes from the flanks. They have sort of doubled down on this approach to an with extent. Elliot. Yeah. With Harvey Elliott, but the thing is, that Elliott is playing in midfield, which is quite interesting because he's actually a winger. But I mean. The only place he can uh wait, who did I change? Henderson Wijnaldum, moves right? to the left. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh so the only place he has is in midfield because I mean if he wants to play in his preferred position or whatever, if on the right wing, it's uh, he's barely gonna get a game because Salah's gonna start most most games. Yeah. But uh, he's basically playing on the right of the midfield, and what he is doing is now Henderson is now gone actually and this Henderson's actually been playing on the left of the midfield trio. Elliot is going wide and providing width. He's the one staying wide, which is now allowing Alexander Arnold to play almost as a midfielder. Salah is staying central. I mean, he comes in field anyway. So now, obviously, Elliot has the space if if Alexander Arnold wants to pass. If this guy is going across to cover, you can push to you've got over. all this space over. And we've actually <coughs> seen Alex in the three games so far. You you if you go back and watch them. Alexander Arnold has been getting a lot of space in this sort of area, the right half space, to make this sort of pass, and it's a very Kevin De Bruyne esque position. And I was going to say, right, it's essentially what he's trying to do is you just said the, the, the thing earlier, right? They, they both of them are the best passers. They're very similar, uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Alexander Arnold with their with their delivery and their their passing skills. Essentially, what Klopp is trying to do is trying to create an uh, De Bruyne there, isn't it? He's trying to get Alexander Arnold to occupy De Bruyne like positions on the field uh, from the right and moving in. Uh, by and using Elliot to 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 take up the wide spot, essentially pull wide, essentially or pull the pull the opposition fullbacks wide. Absolutely. So Alexander Arnold is one of the best players in the league, in my opinion, especially in possession. Fantastic. You want to try and get him on the ball in as much as possible, and you want to try and get him on the ball in this sort of in the right half space because this is from where he can cause a lot of damage. He can pass to Salah if he's making the run in Firmino, Mane, sort of even you know cross field ball to. Robertson making a run in here, and then yep. Robertson can sort of cut it back to a Firmino or whoever yep. or a Salah, and he can take and he can take shots from distances. So he well. can take so shots. Can, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Klopp is basically trying to maximize uh, Alexander Arnold's sort of strengths, and then at the back again, Fabinho can drop in here and form a back three. He's done that. Henderson is dropping in, forming a back three. So you've got you've still got that three man plus a defensive midfielder there. To to you know provide that defensive security if things break down, and yep. the thing with Elliot is because he's a winger, you can always also pass to him, and he can carry it down the flank and cross as well if needed. Yep. So it's 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 giving Liverpool a lot of uh, you know potential rotations here. Salah can stay out wide, and Elliot can come in as well. Yep, and Elliot can come in. And that's also been happening. That's also yep. been happening yep. a little bit where this sort of thing is happening. So. It's giving Liverpool a lot of rotations. It's giving them another sort of, you know, dynamic. weapon that that the opposition mm. exactly. It's a dynamic that the opposition opposition mm. now have to deal with, and uh, yeah. But overall, as I said, Liverpool rely a lot on the wide areas. They rely the the, the fullbacks are the playmakers. I mean, if you look back at data from the last three or four seasons, Alexander Arnold and Robertson have, like, I think. Uh, Some of the 30, best assists in the yeah, 30, yeah, yeah. 40 odd assists combined, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And now, and now with Jota, them. and now with Jota coming in, uh, of course, uh, I think he provides a lot more goals for Liverpool. So I think yeah. he could also, um, in, in place of Firmino, because you know Firmino doesn't score that much. He has not been scoring that much. So with Jota coming in, it's an added ammunition for Liverpool. I, th- I think Jota is very, he's a very direct player, and he he makes yeah. the right runs. Very yeah. different yeah. player to Firmino, right? He makes very so, good runs. Uh, yeah. Whereas so Firmino as, drops deeper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Firmino is your classic false nine. He'll drop deep to pull opposition yeah. players out of position and create space. Jota is the guy because he is a winger essentially, but he gets played in central positions. 
he'll sort of you know always look to run in behind. And then there are rotations that happen. Jota goes out wide. Salah plays centrally. Yeah. Or he'll go out to the left. Mane sometimes plays centrally. It's usually Salah who comes central. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, with Jota, it's a it's a case of making runs in behind. And I mean, let's not forget this is just sort of one template. Now, if you don't have Henderson, got Thiago, yeah, Thiago. The best midfielders in the world. If this guy gets on the pitch and if he gets on the ball, he can control the game easily. He'll, he'll make those passes that pull keep you know the opposition out of position, and then he can make these sort of passes as well. He can do uh, everything yeah. there. Nabi Keita has also been playing really well. So, yep. but Keita there who can provide a goal threat because he gets into the box. So, if you've got Keita, then you might play Fabinho and maybe I'd say Henderson or Milner to provide a little bit more uh, defensive solidity. Defense, defense, yep, because, yep. because Keita gets in, but that's what uh, um, Klopp has different midfielders there. He's got Oxley Chamberlain as well, who's similar to Keita in a, in, a, in in a little bit. So. Uh, lots, you know, lots he, of options, basically. Lots of options. Which he can change. Pitch, yeah. He can chop and change. He can, depending on the opposition, depending on the profile of each player and what sort of midfield he wants, what he wants each player to do. So again, it's a very system-based approach where there's a there's a you know there's a defined way of playing. There are roles that each player sort of fulfills, and then you see okay, if I want my wide player. Because the opposition has a weakness in so and so area, so I want my winger to be doing this. Now, if I want my winger to be doing this, who are the players who can do that? Maybe it's Avi Elliott on the day, so I'll play him there. Or it's Salah today, so I'll play Salah there. I'll play someone else in midfield. So that chopping and changing does happen, but it, but the overall approach, the overall approach stays the same. There are just uh, the chopping and changing uh, happens in terms of changing the, the sort of. Details or the intricacies within that overall system that uh, it is sort of true. I agree one hundred percent, man. I think it's very similar to City. People just drop into positions because they know their roles, right? I mean, this was extremely insightful, Arsenal. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a pity we have, we have been pressed for time, but this was extremely yeah. insightful just to get just to get the two just to get the two perspectives. And I mean, just before we go, right? Just before we go, because it's been awesomely insightful. As a Liverpool fan, I'd just like to get a quick one from you. What are your thoughts so far on Harvey Elliott? He's, he's a bit of a breakout star. Klopp really trusts him. What are your thoughts on, on the man's over and what you've seen of him and the potential he has? I am extremely impressed. Actually, um, I think it was in March or April of this year when I was uh, still working with Total Football Analysis that I did a scout report on Elliot because he was doing extremely well in the championship for Blackburn. I think he got... He ended the season with... Uh, seven goals, 11, 11 assists, I think. Yeah, seven Something goals, around that. Yeah, 11, 12 yeah. assists. And he was playing as a winger for them, but... He was doing extremely well. So I did a report on him and I was, at that time, I remember writing that uh, with uh, with Jordan Shakiri most probably likely to leave Liverpool this summer, Elliot is the kind of player who can play that Shakiri role in terms of being a playmaker in the midfield. Because otherwise, as you said, the, the midfield three is quite functional with, with yep. Wijnaldum, Fabinho and Henderson, which is the sort of first choice midfield trio over the last two years or so. It's a very functional midfield. Their job was to try and get the ball forward to the fullbacks and protect the defence. Obviously, try and create where possible, but the primary role was to do sort of facilitate and try to get the ball uh, to, to Robertson and Alexander-Arnold. When Shakiri used to play, he used to provide a little bit of a playmaking option from midfield. So, I thought Elliot could do that for them because he's again right foot, uh, sorry, left-footed, plays off the right, has a similar profile in terms of his build, in terms of how he runs with the ball, all of that. So he has, I think, taken up that role in the squad, but I didn't think he'd be used in this manner where he'd come into midfield, but he's basically acting in a way to create space for Alexander Arnold. But at the same time, he's also, when he's on, been on the ball, he's done really well. He's made some ex- excellent runs on the ball. He's made some brilliant passes. So he's fit in. He's just 18. And that's what scares me yeah. as a United fan in the sense that he's just 18 years old and he's already doing Maturing so well. Maturing in that. Yeah, and another young player I forgot about, Curtis Jones. He, he broke yeah. through last season. Yeah, he will play quite a, quite. I hope he plays quite a bit because I was. Also he's a fabulous player. He's a fabulous player as well. Yeah, I was quite impressed with uh, him last season. So, Elliot, obviously, he's he's done a fantastic job so far. Um, excuse me, I'm, I'm still waiting to see if he if he sort of keeps his place after the international break. You know, I think it'll depend on 
what teams Liverpool are playing because I'm sure Klopp will want to start Thiago in a, in, a, in a few games um, with the Champions League Nabi, starting. Nabi Keita, Nabi Keita as well, who's, who's, who's done well so far. So yeah, he's, Keita, he, Keita had a really good preseason. Keita had a really yeah. good preseason, and I think the games he's played in the Premier League, a couple of games or whatever, he he did well. As, uh, so yeah. and with the Champions League starting, rotation will happen. So obviously he's not going to play every game. There will be rotation, but you know, as as I said earlier, Liverpool have a variety of midfielders capable of playing different roles. Just depends on what sort of configuration Klopp wants to use on that particular day against that particular whoever the opponent is. But yeah, Elliot, very, very impressed so far and I'm looking forward to see what he can do. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, great, awesome, awesome. Ashal, thanks a lot for this, man. This has been really, really insightful. I think it's one of the like... best we've had on the show so far. I mean, yeah, uh, lots best of... Best tactical analysis yeah, and insight. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's yeah. been absolutely... And, and, and like I said, I think everyone has been just keen. I know a lot of viewers... Keen, I must have been keen to see the differences between the two sides, right? And the way the two op sides operate, the two managers operate. So, really, really insightful. Ram, over to you, man. Oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of course, Harsha, once again, thank you for coming on the show. Now, of course, you know how City and Liverpool play. We should give a call to Ole. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him what that's, to do. That's, that's a different episode. <laughs> trying to figure out, trying to figure out what what he wants to do is a different episode altogether. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm of course, you know, very excited for the uh, games to be back after the international week. Harshal, thank you so much for for absolutely. sparing some time for us. It's been an absolute uh, amazing hour, and of course, we look forward to have you on the show in the future again. Uh, you know, to talk about more insightful and interesting uh, topics as well. So. Signing off from the plot Malaysia. Hi, sure you can join us. Yeah, this is the show for the fans. By the fans. By the fans. By the fans. Yeah. Walk alone, guys. GGMU, always. <laughs> <laughs>